Good blessed evening to you. It's somewhere around seven o'clock ish and I'm just here on the upper bank just above the fairy wood and about to have a little walk walk through the greenery because I'm feeling just a little bit I don't know overwhelmed I don't know why I feel overwhelmed I just do so in keeping with my philosophy of what to do I've come out into nature I'm going to go and bathe in the greenery <sighs> I've had a busy day I've had some visitors and uh, then I've sat down I've read a little bit of my book which is fabulous by the way but I'll talk about that in another video and um, then just for the past couple of hours I've just felt a creeping sense of being overwhelmed so here I am coming down into the fairy wood where it's very quiet at the moment it's very quiet almost solemn I'm trying to think what it is I feel do I fe feel a sense of foreboding? I don't know hmm Jack? <laughs> well, he's going on a wee jolly. So, I want to say hello to Lynn. Lynn, my dear, dear, dear American lady. Wonderful, wonderful woman. Oh my word. How many of you incredible American women are out there in that country holding family together? Much understated, much underrated and so damned powerful. You know the power that you hold you know the life that you nurture and you know for generations you've kept things together well you know I have a strong sense I have to say this now to you you keep holding it together whatever woman in America is listening to this you keep holding it together because I'll tell you you're mighty you're a mighty crew. <laughs> Lynn, when I read your emails, and I know you have your trouble to bear, and yet you live with such good grace, with such optimism, with such deep charity, deep down in your soul. You wonderful, wonderful woman. More power to you. More power to all of you. Do you know, it's all those little voices. And I don't mean little in terms of who they are. I mean the attention that they get from the powers that be. It's all those little voices that are the real strength of a country. It's not the big wigs at the top. It's not the, the, the movers and shakers and corporate leaders and government leaders and politicians and church leaders and education leaders and oh yes they're all great at leading but are they good at doing? Well I strongly believe it's the women who just keep doing who keep holding it together Do you know I was just saying to my visitor today 
I can never remember my mother sitting down at the table and eating with us. She was always standing up serving. Never my father. Yes, I know it was traditional in those days for the woman to do everything and for the man to be sitting holding his knife and fork waiting for the plate to be put in front of him. But my mother was always serving, was always nurturing. And you know, people think I'm a great, strong woman and I'm a feminist and all the rest of it. Give me any situation, put me into, into any situation and I am the one who does the nurturing. I just can't help it. That is in my DNA. That is what I am as a woman. I nurture. It's what we women do. And what more and more men are beginning to do. And I've got to say that because my son is a great nurturer. And you know, to a small extent, but nevertheless, it must be attributed to him, even my ex-husband, when he's in a situation, he will nurture. He will put the other person in front of himself. Now, not in all ways, <laughs> because that's why we're divorced. <laughs> but he's still a mighty man. He's got a good heart and he's very compassionate. And that brings me on to something else. As I'm walking through these little woods, where am I now? Okay. Jack? Just looking back up there towards the cottage. That brings me on to something else. I remember when I was first going out with my ex-husband, as he is now, um, my mother saying to me, Oh, I like Ronnie. Oh, I do like Ronnie, she said. Because I've watched him and you know he's very good with animals. He's very good with animals. And I often thought about that over the years. And often wondered why it is that I never fell out with him. Not really fell out with him, you know, I mean, I, I hated him for a while. I was thinking about hiring a hitman for a short time. <laughs> and then I thought, no, I'll just divorce him instead. But we've always remained friends. Because we share that love for animals. That's our common ground. It's not just our children. Obviously, children should always be the common ground between parents. But it's as deep compassion for animals that for me makes him worthy to be someone I call a friend. So, getting back to women and getting back to my friend Lynn. I'm just, I'm just stood here thinking because I'm just kind of casting my casting my mind back over all the emails I've got from her. I've saved them all, you know, Lynn. Turn turn it into a book one of these days. <laughs> Only the names are changed. Um, but we're such optimists. We are such optimists. I mean, it doesn't matter what nonsense is going on. We, we always seem to see the glass as being, you know, half full. It's never half empty. <sighs> Reminds me of that advertisement. I remember on television years ago. Wonderful, wonderful advertisement. Um, uh, who, was the, who was the great English actress who starred in it? I mean, it was an advertisement for British Telecom or something like that. Jack, come back. Come on, back up here. And uh, anyway, um, 
this particular actress took the part of the Jewish mama. No, uh, was it? No, it wasn't the Jewish mama. It was the Jewish grandmother, an even more powerful figure. And um, her grandson was trying to break the news to her, basically that he'd failed all his exams at school. All right. So, um, <laughs> so she was saying. So, um, how many O levels? Because an, an O level for those of you in America is like um, a grade. Um, in secondary school that helps to get you on to your A-levels and thus on to university. So they're pretty important. So she said, well, how many O-levels did you take? And uh, he said, oh, whatever it was. You know, he took, I don't know, seven or eight O-levels and uh, basically failed them all, you know. So there she was, desperate, absolutely desperate to see the glasses half full. So um, she said... Uh, well, uh, you got one, because he passed one. He says, so, oh, yeah, yeah, it was... Uh, she says, well, what was it? Oh, it was um, sociology, I think it was, he said. S what? She says, sociology? You mean you've got an ology? And then, and then she began talking on the phone to her friend. Yes, he's got an ology. He's got, <laughs> making it out, you know, that he was just absolutely... Uh, you know, <laughs> whiz, whiz kid, you know, that he'd kind of got this ology. So that was like all the exams put together. And I just thought, I thought of that advertisement one day when I was reading one of Lynn's emails. You know, that within all this <sighs> trouble and strife, Trouble and strife that makes up a mother's life, that makes up a parent's life. That she was sort of cherry picking out the good bits and saying, well, you know, it's, hey, look, <laughs> it's all good. And I just think that that's what so many women are great at. And... I feel I can speak for a lot of American women because I get so many, um, you know, emails and contacts from you. And you're just so powerful. And I've had, um, I've had several, several, more than several over the years. I've had quite a few um, American women. I won't say ladies because you know something. Ladies, no, 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 I don't like being called a lady. I like being called a woman. So I'm going to use the title woman. Um, we are a breed apart, you know. And I've had many American women visit and quite a few come to stay. And um, just, just an incredible energy. Just an incredible energy. Sally, you've been staying with me recently and you've left like a whole well of energy behind, which is lovely. I can sense it. Sally, by the way, I'll just explain a little bit about Sally without revealing too much of her identity. But she's the cut of Diane Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> we had great fun with that because when she was here and I was taking her around to various places and introducing her to various people and uh, I've had quite a lot of feedback to say so was her name Sally then? Was that her name? Because they all thought she looked very much like Diane Keaton Oh, no here I am rambling on. Ramble, ramble. Mm. Now look at that. There's some lovely blackberries just coming into ripe. Nothing quite like a blackberry and apple tart. Absolutely delicious. 
Oh God, look at this now. I'm looking at the screen and that orange light is flashing. I need to have this battery on permanent charge. So, oh, heck, I'll just keep filming until it goes. When it cuts out, it cuts out. I'm sure you won't mind. How beautiful it is. How restful and beautiful. And there's the water flowing out of the silt pond, look. And down into the lower pond. Just beautiful. We'll cut through here actually. We'll just cross the water. Come on, Jack. Hmm. I'm wearing my silly little flip flops. So my feet are getting a wee bit wet. But that's okay. It's just a wee bit of rain on the grass. My little woodland. Look at those beautiful fuchsia there. Lovely. Now those of you who read my blog all about my little fox. Gonna have a little peek at his resting place now and see how the land lies. There's his little skull down there. Don't know if you can see it through the rubus. But I shall retrieve his little skull. I think round about Samhain. And bring it up to the cottage. Bring him back home. So, for all you wonderful women out there, wonderful carers, wonderful parents, and especially my friend Lynn and all those great women in America. <laughs> I'll tell you this much. Despite all the nonsense going on, you women have yet to find your place. And your place is leading. It's not just following along behind, mopping up. It's leading. There is a renaissance happening. I think, I think we're entering a very special time when for the first time in millennia women, women are going to start leading the way and being recognised to lead the way And not just about holding the home together, the keep keeping the hearth and home together. Because you know something, when they're given half a chance, look how they rise. My mother, who was English, often told me stories about World War II. She was a child growing up in World War II. And the women ran the country. Do you know that? They ran the country. I mean, Winston Churchill was very good at giving speeches and helping to organise things and, you know, a military leader, I suppose, in that respect. But it was the women who ran the country. And they did a damn fine job of it. The healthiest generation that ever came through. 
World War II generation. Amazing. Do you know I'm looking just down as I walk and I'm seeing a massive amount of little herb which my friend Terry has mentioned before and it's called Self Heal. <clears throat> The little birds have been eating all the fruits, look. <laughs> 